Hello viewers and welcome to Shaping Generations, a program designed to align you with God's divine purpose. I am Dr. Simon Mwawo. See you after the break. He told us that you are the Lamb of God, so we are looking for you. Freedom doesn't come easy. Someone has to pronounce it that you are free. Welcome to Shaping Generations with Dr. Simon Mwawo. Today we continue with the subject, questions God asks us. And I'm addressing one particular question, what are you looking for? I'm reading from the gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 29 to 42. The Bible says the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. And said, look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was there before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water and was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen son. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What are you looking for? Come here, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which translated as Peter. Questions God asks us. In the other episodes, I spoke broadly about the questions that God addresses at us, asking us as a challenge so that in our response to those questions, we can understand what is actually expected of us. I know many times as believers and non-believers alike, we do ask questions about God. Who is God? How is he like? Is he real or he is not real at all? Who is Jesus? What does it mean when we say Jesus is the son of God? So we ask so many questions, not knowing that God also talks back at us and asks us in different ways. Some of the questions... God asks directly, 
some of the questions he asks us through Jesus Christ, the only revealed Son of God. And these questions, when they are asked to us, they are meant for us to reflect on the reasons why we actually know God, love him, and want to follow him and to live with him. Sometimes those questions are asked when we are afraid. We are scared of something happening in our lives. Sometimes those questions are asked to us when we are crying. Sometimes those questions are asked to us even when we are leading good lives. The reason is, in doing so, God would like to hook us to himself within the sphere or rather the, the perimeters of what he has designed we should be. Now, as we respond to some of those questions, the first thing that happens is that we are, after responding, to apply our responses to our daily lives. Now, this particular question, what are you looking for? Jesus is asking the first disciples. This is the very first time when he is calling the disciples out so he can be with them and nurture them, teach them, so that they too can receive the Spirit of God and share the gospel with others. And the main intention for Jesus' own work in this sphere is that when he calls these disciples and prepares them, they are to go out and share with others. Tell them about who Jesus is. Why is it so important to tell others about Jesus? Number one, it's because bringing others to, to experience Jesus and his love is the greatest work on earth. This is so because Jesus can take people out of darkness into light. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, when Jesus spoke about himself, he actually said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light, the light of life itself. So when Jesus presents himself as a light, he's actually saying, I am going to shed the way so that you will be able to see where you are going. Bringing others to Jesus is also a paramount thing. Why? Because Jesus can take people out of the prison of sin into freedom and love. The Bible says sin is actually lawlessness. We are imprisoned by it. If we will commit a crime, you are convicted, you go to jail, you are in prison. So sin imprisons us, puts us in the prison cage that we fail to experience that freedom which God gives freely. Bringing others to Jesus is also paramount because it can save people from a terror of hell and bring them into the glory of heaven. And this is why it was very important for John as a forerunner who came to, 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 to baptize people, those that fled the coming wrath and came to join this new generation of a people. So when they came to him, he baptized them. And they went through a baptism of repentance as he preached. He said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and be baptized. So people went and were baptized by John. 
John had disciples that he walked with during his work. But then when he saw Jesus coming, something so important. We can see that from the very beginning, the men and women of God that had experienced Jesus Christ and came to know him, they did not privatize him. They did not keep Jesus and the good news to themselves. They were able to share with others. They would share with others, we have seen the Lord. We have found the Lord. We have found the King of Kings. And that's why as believers, if you are a Christian and you have experienced Jesus, that is real Jesus with a real freedom in Jesus, it is important for you to share that Jesus with others. Because freedom doesn't come easy. Whether physically, whether you are in a physical jail, you are in a physical bondage, freedom doesn't come easy. Someone has to pronounce it that you are free. And so for us to be liberated from, the, from this sin, which captures the world, for us to be liberated, someone has to make that declaration. And Jesus does. Why? He takes away the sins of the world and sheds the light before us so that as we walk in it we are able to experience that freedom and that fellowship with God as the scripture says and the steps of the righteous are ordered by God for the Lord to begin to order our steps the first thing is to take the hedge of sin out of our faces so John says look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Sin is dangerous. It is dangerous. We have talked in other episodes that the wages of sin is death. Finish. Every action has got its own results. So the wages of sin, the payment, is death. And then the Bible also says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, it says that, and the soul that sins is a soul that will die. It is just like you are in the house locked up and then a fire pops out in the house. Once you remain in that house without running away from it, you will die right there. So when a fire pops up, if your house catches fire, the only thing that you know is that if I stay, if I remain in the house, the next thing is I will die, I will be burnt. And that's it. So I have to find a way out. Where is an exit? Is it a window? Is it the actual door? Or is it the roof that I'm going to use? So for as long as we remain in sin, we know that we will die. A healthy living and a healthy life is one that is mindful of the dangers of life. I know boys and girls, when they become teenagers, they want to experience life. So everything is you warn them of the coming wrath, the wages of sin or misbehavior. They'll tell you, I don't care. It's my life. I'm a teenager. I've seen that everywhere in all the cultures across the, across the globe. So the wages of sin is dead. So as long as you remain in sin, unrepentant, you will die. Your body will just be waiting for the expiry date. But then your destiny will be hell. But thanks be to Jesus, who came that we may have life, and that we may have it more abundantly. Isn't it wonderful to be a child of the Lord? So John explains in verse 30 of John chapter 1. This is very interesting. He says, this is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me, has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself 
did not even know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. So John is trying to explain, he says, this special mandate I have of baptism, I was only given this special instruction so that when the Son of Man comes, he will be fully revealed to Israel because something dramatic is going to happen at his baptism that everyone will know that this is the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world. So he says, this is the reason why I came baptizing. Wow, what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing. So he, he actually says, I am not a savior. My action is simply to prepare the word for the Lord. I am not making disciples for myself. And you know, when you have disciples, you have actual assistance. They're helping you to carry out responsibilities. And so John's wake was actually lighter. Why? Because he had disciples. But he knew that he can't keep them. So when Jesus came along, he turned to his disciples and he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. They had not seen the Lord before. They did not know the Lord at all. But John because of the Spirit of God and by the power of revelation, knew the Lord and how he looked like and what things would happen when he comes. So he gave a testimony to everyone. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. Those are the, the actual things that happened that convinced him that this is truly the Son of God. Verse 33 says, And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And he went on to say, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So Jesus is not just man. He is a chosen one of God. The deliverer, the Messiah, the savior, the mighty one, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the, 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 the sovereign lord. So, John points his disciples to Jesus based, uh, based on the revelation that he knew about him. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. When they heard him say, look the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the world, they followed followed Jesus. So Jesus was walking and walking and then he looked behind and all he saw there were two disciples following him. John's disciples. And then he asked them quickly, what are you looking for? As if he he doesn't want them what are you looking for? What an interesting question. So he wanted them to respond and say, because John, our, 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 our man, our master, told us that you are the chosen one. John, our master, we are disciples of John. He told us that you are the light of the world. He told us that you take away the sins of the world. We are sinners. We have come. We would like you to save us. He told us that you are the Lord. He told us that you are the Lamb of God. That's why. And so we are looking for you. We are looking.
looking for you. And I like the, their response. In a clear sentence, more than uh, what I have just explained. They said, Rabbi. <laughs> you know, they, they went straight to saying, teacher. <laughs> teacher. Where are you staying, teacher? <laughs> Where are you staying? So they say, hey, we can't talk here. This question you are asking us, we would like to sit down. We would like you to tell us everything about yourself. We have heard from John. Now we want you to teach us all about the kingdom of God, how we can take away our sins and how we can go into a sphere of freedom and love. What are you looking for? Join me for part two. Thank you. Thank you for watching Shaping Generations with Dr. Simon Wovovo. We would like to hear from you. For prayer and counseling support, do not hesitate to contact us. Our email address is info at shapinggenerations.com. You can also call us on WhatsApp 709-567-2915 or visit our website at www.shapinggenerations.com and fill up a prayer request and counseling form and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, God bless you and Shalom.